you better make way Open up your ears or let the word spray Hey, hey, did you hear the noise? Something just exploded, is a mushroom, have you noticed? Geek class, clear out the pad Kids was throwing caca and Chewbacca is a rat Hey, what, better call your dad? Something has been growing underneath the doormat Geek class Welcome back, geeks, nerds, and dweebs alike. I'm Mike. I'm Toombs. And you're listening to Geek Blast on... Corrosive Radio. And, of course, we got uh, James over in the UK. Hello. James, me laddie. James, me laddie, me laddie. How you doing over there? I'm fine. Good. Uh, Tonight we got a special treat for you guys. Um, We spoke to this gentleman uh, right after the con. And, um, well, we have Mike... The Borg, is that what you call yourself? Uh, the Borg Nine, yeah. The Borg Nine, um, here tonight, and uh, this is the gentleman that uh, is going to have uh, Kevin Smith do his wedding for him, and he's live tonight in studio. Um, so we're tra- we're doing a little trial run with Mike to see, uh, you know, if, if he could become one of the Geek Blast teammates. But um, we locked Kevin Smith in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to be talking with Mike a little bit so you guys can get to know him. And um, also we have Stinkfist is back on tonight doing a um, Twitch thing with uh, – what, what game was it again? I'm doing Destiny, the trial Destiny. run. The trial Yeah. Run. So you're playing the demo of Destiny. Fuck yeah. Jesus. Stop saying trial run. It's a demo. How many hours <laughs> I put in that game, man? <laughs> Terrible game. Terrible, terrible game. Awful. It's oh, I freaking love it. And it's misleading. Oh, no, no. I put about 100 hours into it. Man. Life is misleading. Great marketing campaign. Misleading I, game. I love the game. Love it. I mean, I know it fell short in some areas, but, I mean, it's the most addicting thing I've played in probably 10 years. I, then why shouldn't I be playing it, then? Um, you should play the full game. The demo, I mean, you probably breeze through in half an hour, you know? You really right, don't right. get it. You don't really get a taste of the game by playing the demo. Yeah. I mean, you taste it by playing 40 hours. You know, okay. then then you understand what it is. Get the full taste. Stink. Yeah. So so it literally takes me three days to understand that this game is good. Yes. <laughs> yes. About that. <laughs> All right. Did you play the raid? No. I, then I, you have no idea. I, I mean, I played it at a friend's house, but I couldn't get through it. I thought I was playing Halo, but that's what the commercial told me, and <laughs> I was not aware that I was playing a like an MMO style slash shooter. Halo. Yeah. And I was all confused. If you don't like upgrading and all that other stuff, I, I do. Know. But I'm all by myself, tackling this giant monster dude, and this guy is running around the screen. I'm like, "Yo, bro, help me!" And I'm just there mm-hmm. by myself. I'm like, "This game is ridiculously hard for no reason," and I just couldn't do it. I was like, "I'm returning this." Oh, so that's why it sucked. Because you couldn't. He had a bad experience. No, because I got no <laughs> friends on Xbox. That's why. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> I'm here trying to talk to strangers. This guy's from Britain. No offense, James. And he's like, no, he's like, sorry, mate. And I was like, all right, whatever, man. And uh, I was like, we won the war both times. So, and then uh, you know, he goes off on his merry way and disappears. So I was like, I, I can't stake destiny. I'm, I'm done. Well, unfortunately, I don't have it on Xbox One, or I would hold your hand, my son. Hold your hand through the greatness of it all. Well, you got to play the raid to fully understand the game. Yeah, it is a good game. I like it. Um, so moving along here, we're gonna I'm gonna give you a little rundown of tonight's show. Um, we do shout outs, uh, which I'll get into in a minute. We're gonna do an intro to uh, say say your nickname again, Mike. The Borg Nine. Smorgasbord. The, the Borg Nine. The intro to. Bo- Does that have anything Borg to do with Smorgasbord? No, uh, no, just I'll get into it. Yeah, to let us know. <laughs> Uh, so we're gonna, you know, we're gonna spend a little time with Mike. He'll, he'll tell us about himself, and uh, we're, then we're gonna get into comic talk with James over there in the UK. Um, hopefully, he does uh, give us a little more info than last week, James. Mike, where'd you? I'm sorry. Go? I hope I last longer this time. I put that pussy in the closet. Mike, where'd that cat go? With Kevin Smith. <laughs> yeah, with Kevin Smith. <laughs> he rusted my pen. <laughs> Um, and then tonight, uh, instead of doing some Star Wars lessons, I'm actually going to... We, we're going to talk about the Star Wars trailer. I don't know who's seen it, who hasn't. I did. I but, saw the um, actual official one. I thought the fan-made one was better I, than the official. I Agreed. thought so, too. Yeah, but, you uh, know what I was talking about afterwards, yeah, right? Absolutely. absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, so after we do, we do we, you know, we're going to talk about Star Wars a little bit, and then uh, we're going to get into the movie quotes. Uh, I think Danny's going to call in from JKA. He's going to give us a little... Uh, Danny. Information what's going on in the Jedi Knight Academy world. And um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about some more space stuff. You know, you guys probably got bored last time when I was talking about the uh, <laughs> the Rosetta. Um, but 
The you comet? know, there's some new things happening, so I want to talk about it. Rosetta Stone. Rosetta Stone. Uh, hmm. um, then Tombs is going to jump into his travel guide and tell us some news and game reviews and what he does best. And then uh, we're going to have our Geekly Desire. And everybody knows... <laughs> meow. Everybody knows that the Geekly Desire is just what a geek desires. Just tell us what you want. Yeah. If you guys want to call in and contribute, it's 201-580-3712 is the number to call in. Uh, at any time, we'll take your call. Um, so let's uh, let's get into oh the shout outs. That's what I, I'm forgetting things. Jesus, right. Michael. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, first off, we want to uh, thank uh, Mickey over to Batcave Comics. He's uh, he's been a big proponent in a couple of things we're doing on the side in, in the in the background. So we got some things going on with him. If you guys are in need, check him out. The BatcaveComics.com. Um, also, check out our Facebook page. Um, Rabbit is back on the Facebook page, so she's always a good uh, good laugh. She gives you a good laugh. Check out those. Then we have uh, two other pages that we, we've always been running, uh, The Nerd Cave and uh, DC vs. Marvel, which is basically like a mashup thing. If you, know, if you have two characters from two different universes that you want to see fight, put them there, and we'll, uh, we'll talk about them. So, other than that, I mean, our shout-outs are pretty much done. And, of course, we always shout-out Corrosive Radio for for letting us broadcast on their wonderful station, which is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, pure music. And also, you catch Burnt Films, uh, 2 o'clock, Sundays. Check them out. And uh, so, let's get into the... Uh, Mike, tell us about yourself, man. What do you... What do you what's, what's in your life? What do you, 25, <laughs> Libra, long walks on the beach, um, don't go in the water, uh... So uh, you don't like sharks? No, um, <laughs> I saw one once about twenty-five feet away from me when I was ten years old in Florida. Uh, I didn't go to the beach until I was about eighteen. All right, this yeah. is terrifying, tra- traumatizing, traumatizing. All right, that's uh, that's good. It's a good start. Go to England, <laughs> no sharks. Yeah, but I got to cross an ocean full of them to get there. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Wait, England doesn't have sharks? No. What do you have, sir? Octopuses. Uh, Jellyfish. Is it an octopi? <laughs> You're a jelly. Octopi? I don't know. <laughs> yep, it is octopi, but we just have jellyfish. Just jellyfish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Mike, why, why don't you tell me a little bit about what you're into? I know you're into magic, right? You're into yeah. those card, card, card game. Card game. I still got my original decks. Yeah, uh, Magic Gathering actually fought in the World mm-hmm. Championships right now in uh, France. That's wow. why I asked uh, how far time zone wise it was from you, James. Um, uh, so we've been watching that uh, early in the morning, uh, into that. Uh, comics, man, sci-fi movies, uh, shit. TV Mike, shows, Mike, i got to ask you real quick before I forget, because I'm going to definitely forget about it. The yeah, Magic the Gathering it. cards, the originals, are they worth anything? How original are we talking about? The originals that came out. Was it 90s? In 93? Yeah, the first, the first line. Uh, I have a great deal of those. Yeah, um, anywhere from... Ten bucks to five, six, seven dollars, thousand dollars. What? What? One card. Tombs, you might be sitting on you a gold a, mine. It, and you don't even if know. If you it. have a black lotus with a black border, you're looking at, it, depending on the condition, close to ten thousand dollars. Black lotus with black border. Yeah. If you have the white border one, it's about two grand to three grand. What? If you I, have any, I of the, see what I got. any of the lands, those are about two thousand, three thousand dollars. If you have them um, white border, they're a few hundred dollars, depending on which ones you have. Uh, any of the moxes, they're several thousand dollars. I think um, next week I'll bring my collection and you should take a look at them and uh, tell me if I got something. Never told you how much they're worth. (laughs) I would have never thought, bro. (laughs) God damn, I wish I didn't put them in that black garbage bag. I should have probably (laughs) took care of them. I have some in plastic cards and uh, covers and shit. They were worth something at the time when they came out, so. If you have anything unopened, Mm -hmm. that can fetch several thousand dollars. If you have an open box or like a tournament starter deck, you can get ten to twenty grand, depending what? on what it is. Uh, the unopened the box. Power of Christ, God. <laughs> an open box of beta is going for about twenty thousand dollars. That's insane. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow, I would have never thought they would have been worth money like that. <laughs> that's one ups for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wish at nineteen ninety three I would have old enough to, smart enough to realize investing into these cards. Yeah, we there's did. a magic um, stock market type deal with cards and price fluctuation. Right. So you can. Um, Go online and see how much cars are worth, and they're actually like an investment. Wow, man! Yeah, yeah I still got the the original little uh, the little books that told you how to play. 
So, I mean, you can. There's people out there that'll buy those. Wow. And even original boxes and original uh, the stores uh, and everything, all and, that stuff. Yeah, depending on what you have. If you have, because back then they did a lot of merchandise to promote the game. Right. If you have a lot of those things, they're worth a couple dollars, a couple hundred dollars, depending on what you have. Wow, man. Wow. All right. Hmm. Well, that's pretty cool. I mean, uh, have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons, Mike? Uh, nobody wants to play. Uh, nobody can like dedicate the time to actually do it. Would I always you? wanted to. So you never have, though? No. I've seen people play it. I've uh, tried, attempted, but I, I never actually did it. Is it, um, it is definitely similar to Magic, though, right? I've uh, played Dungeons & Dragons, it, but I've never played Magic. It was made to play in between D&D matches because certain people would stay there, or D&D games or whatever they're called. Right. Um, kind of like a quick pick-me-up, and it got so popular that it took off on its own. But it has D&D elements into it, and like uh, the fantasy lore is into it. Right, yeah. Cool. I mean, I used to be huge into D&D when my brother was playing it, you know, and, and then it was, it was my brother and all his older friends would play, and I'd be like, can I play? Can I play? And they'd be like, get the hell out of here, kid. You can't play this game. And I was always, you know, I was always the, uh, the younger brother. But uh, I always wanted to, like, get into it, but never really got into it. You know, it was always like... I was always in that like lore kind of <laughs> the yeah. lore of Dungeons and Dragons, you know. I I played like offshoots of it. There's a, a superhero one called Mutants and Masterminds. Right. I played that one where you uh, make a superhero character and you, it's same same premise, um, and you got to have a good DM. If you don't have a good DM, the game's gonna suck. And for you just out there that don't know what a DM is, dungeon master, storyteller too. Yeah. Um, Brendan, don't be scared. Just run full fledged. Don't be scared of this game. Trust me, especially in the beginning like this. If somebody gets near you, use your melee smack. Smack if, it if you have. It. I, I don't know who Brendan is, but I'm Stink Fist, and I'll be glad to take your advice. Sorry, Stink. <laughs> I, I was trying to be considerate and and he loves look the at name. you as a human being, and not just a Stink Fist He's being. He's a human being of stinky fists. <laughs> uh. All right, if it's past eight o'clock at night, he is officially Stink Fist. <laughs> <sighs> there you go. Don't, oh, don't be don't scared of those buggers. Dregs and vandals ain't <laughs> shit. All right. So um, getting back into your uh, your magic. So so tell tell us a little more, like, do you go to tournaments and stuff like that? You, I remember you telling me you were going to tournaments and yeah, I was at trying to play. Grand Prix New Jersey. Um, it's like uh, it's a large, one of the larger tournaments that they have. It was the largest Grand Prix, I believe, on record. It was about four or five thousand registered people that were there, and then people that came for side events and stuff too. Uh, there was a few thousand people. There was packed. It's a lot of geeks. Out. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> nothing like the con, though. Nothing like Comic Con. No, right? no. no, nothing. Nothing like Comic Con. But uh, Comic Con used to have tournaments um, at the Javits Center on the top. At, during the convention, and you can go up there, you can enter. Uh, a lot of them were like uh, eight round, eight people, and it's win a box. Whoever wins, wins a box. Wow. So they would have stuff like that. They haven't done that in a while. Uh, right. Wizard World sometimes does that, but New York Comic Con hasn't done that in a few years, as far as I know. Awesome. Mm. I, I know that uh, a lot of the, like, the stores that wasn't in this area used like the comic stores and stuff like that, Game Game Factory... Like those places, they always used to have tournaments. Yeah, in the going on in the back. Stuff. I used yep. to play Yu-Gi-Oh there at Game Factory. Did you? Uh, yeah, really? I did. Okay, yeah, we we frequented that store a lot. Yeah, man, statues, everything. The guy was a little bit of a d bag to me because he didn't want to. Um, he got upset one day because I asked him why he marked all his games up five dollars. <laughs> And He's like, yeah, why are you charging more? Yeah, why are you charge more than it? Dude, one day we're not going to be here, man. Just pay it. And Just now they're pay. not here today. And now you're not there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry, man. You should have charged what everybody else was charging. <laughs> Greedy bastard. I play, uh, I, I still play at a store up in Somerset. Uh, can I have a shout out to him? Go ahead. At Target, the only game in town. Uh, there's a few Magic pros from there. Ossip uh, is from there. Patrick Sullivan, who's the commentator on Star City Games, is from there. Um, they have uh, board game nights, everything. That's like the geek haven of game store. They don't have comics, but there's a comic shop down the road. But they have any game that you want, board game. They have uh, miniatures like Warhammer, card games, and they're, you can stay there till all hours of the night. Now, I don't really so know you, what games are popular anymore, like board games I'm talking about. Like, I know Risk is pretty big, right? People love Risk. Yeah, I mean, they, they have everything. Like, there's a, they have shelves full of games that you can just go and play with a bunch of people. Uh, they don't charge. Uh, oh, really? you can, yeah, you can just go hang out and, and just you know pick up games with just random people. Tim, what's your favorite board game? Uh, 
I'd have to say, when I was little, I really liked Life. <laughs> <laughs> That was my favorite board game because I I'd take the little cars and go. Nnh. And you'd run everybody else over. That's it, man. I never played the game though, actually. Especially those small children. <laughs> I would just, I would just take out the board and yeah, I know this is a different kind of board game. That's you know your generic family board game, but um, yeah, I never actually played it. I just like to take the little cars and go. Nnh. You're uh, you're track. always a weird bird, Tim's. Yeah. What about you, James? What's your favorite uh, board game? Mousetrap. Oh, Mouse I remember trap. that one. That one didn't have a purpose either, really. You no. just set up the mousetrap, have the little dinghies go, and then that was it. You'd try to have the mouse get caught in it. That was the point of the game. Mm. Was there a point? I just set it up. That's it. Yeah. My favorite thing was assembling it. Apart exactly. from when they didn't fit in the holes, and it was like, oh, my God. This game was made to be put together. Well, remember, uh, remember Operation? I think they still sell that. I'm not sure. Of course sure they right. do. They have, uh, mm. they have all different types of versions of Operation now. Mm. I hated Operation because I would mm. always have the shaky hand, and he'd be like, bang. Really? And my brother would be like, you lose, and he'd punch me in the arm all the time. Mm. Um, womp, womp. Yeah, so. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Mike? What's your favorite uh, board game there? Uh, board game would have to probably be Risk. Risk? Yeah, Risk, or there's a, I don't know if you'd call it a board game, but there's like Star Wars Epic Duels. Yes. Uh, came out with yes. Attack of the Clones came yes, out. Yes. And, um, I've seen it, yeah. That game is worth $100. Is it really? Hmm. Yeah. If you can, you have it in good shape, you can get uh, 100 bucks for it, give or take. I do that. a lot of, I go like to flea markets and stuff, and I yeah. like collect stuff, like anything nerdy and geek-like, so kind of mm-hmm. just figure out the prices from there. Yeah, you're, right, you're right on the, the bandwagon here. That's good. I have a lot of different versions of Clue. I have a Harry Potter clue. I have the old wooden box clue. You know, <laughs> a bunch of clues, but... I like clue. But the only thing about clue that um, I didn't like was mm-hmm. all the... Did it scare you, just, Mike? No, the, like the original. Like the characters were just very blah. I mean, didn't the game come out like 1960-something? Or... Yeah. yeah. Did you see the movie? There was oh, a movie? movie? You never saw great. the movie? No. Wow, the Tim dude. Curry? Flagged. <laughs> what year did it come out? 1986, 85? Yeah, Christopher Lloyd was oh, in it. Oh, great movie. If, if, Wonderful if, flick. Mm, check it out, man. Yeah, you got to check it out. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, How old are you again? Yeah, it makes 25. the game. It's acceptable. I mean, he missed yeah, part of the 80s. Part of the 80s, yeah. I can still get into to 80s bars. And when I have 80s <laughs> night, I can still get in for free. And everybody else that I hang out with can't, so it's awesome. One hand. Right. Goonies? Yes. Legend? No. Oh, oh uh, Stand By Me? Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, never Ending Story? Yep. All right, so he's got, you know, four out of the five. Never Ending Story 2? No, no. There's a two. <laughs> that, that was so garbage. You said there was a two? That was Everybody garbage. knows that there's a two, and there's a three. Two was garbage. Two so. was. They, well, the first one was the best, of course. Oh, Lost Boys. Yeah. Lost okay. Boys. So, he's, yeah, he's All got right. most of Redeemed yourself. Yeah. That's good. Um, <laughs> I'm saying nothing. Yeah, because James doesn't know any of those movies. Right, James? I, I know Goonies. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that matters, bro. That's all that matters. You're you okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, um, tell us some of your uh, some of your goals in life. Like, where do you, where do you, you know what, what are you trying to achieve with uh, with joining Geek Blast? Uh, I want to retire at thirty nice. from my my day job, <laughs> and I want to do this. Just for the rest of my life and just have fun. All right, that's, uh, uh, that's a great goal, man. I want to I want to go to cons and stuff. I, I love the con scene. Uh, I love being involved with it. Uh, yeah. Just watching it, going from to New York Comic Con the first time in 2009, and then seeing how it evolved to today is is amazing. Leaps and bounds, yeah. yeah. It really is a smorgasbord. <laughs> <laughs> You're the first person to say that. Yeah. Everybody yeah. else says, uh, like, because my last name is 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 French Italian, so. And it was changed throughout history, so it was uh, so everybody called me Borgnine, like Ernest Borgnine. Mm-hmm. So when I, I tried to do a podcast a long time ago, somebody was like, I couldn't think of a name for myself. So when I backyard wrestled, I was like Mike Styles, Mikey the Kid, uh, you name it. I had a name, so I, and I couldn't stick to one thing. So somebody's like, you know, nobody can pronounce your last name because I didn't. So he's like, why don't you just to use Borgnine and then do the number nine, and that's your like thing. So I was like, go for it. And that's what I rolled with, and, and it, that's how it is. Borgnine. You were stamped, sir. So it's like, and people are like, are you related to Ernest Borgnine? I'd be like, I wouldn't be here if I was, because I'd have some money. <laughs> yeah, true. I wouldn't be bugging the shit out of him. Talking to you, buddy. Um, all right, cool, man. Well, uh, well, we'll be looking forward to hearing from you in the future as well. Um, 
James, I think it's time to give a little talk on the comic section. Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah, so. I'm hoping to last a lot longer than four minutes. <laughs> wait, wait, <clears throat> Brennan's driving me crazy. Hold on, real quick. Up wait, left, wait, can we just say that's what she said? Top left, <clears throat> go to the sun thingy. Go to the sun. <clears throat> click on the sun, and that's how you upgrade. Okay, but it's sorry. hot on the sun. There go ahead. we go. Uh-huh. Okay, with comic books, I'll start off with the stuff I know about because you know, Spidey fan review man, kind of my thing. This week, uh, The Amazing Spider-Man 11 came out. That is obviously tied in with the big Spider-Verse event in which Peter bumps into the Otto Octavius version of himself. What does he do? He, uh, he bumps into the version of himself oh, okay. as well, Otto Octavius as himself That's from the Superior Spider-Man series. And they hash it out and have a pretty good fisty fight. I'd definitely check that out. Okay. What's the difference between a fisty fight and a fist fight? A fisty fight sounds more childish. What's a, what's a fist of cuffs? Fisticuffs, eh? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a lot more... Stop or I'll bump you. <laughs> do, you do you have to wear cufflinks? Uh, yeah. No, you know those cones they put around dogs' heads? Yes. It's like those on your wrists. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. And then to jump over to the DC side of things, Scott Snyder and Frank Miller are to co-write The Dark Knight 3, possibly. That is a very interesting piece of news I have read. Cool. Just there. Mm. cool. Uh, I find it intriguing. Do you find it intriguing? I do, sir. I do. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, Peggy Carter, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., and some other titles have been released this week. Captain America, Peggy Carter. What is and the deal with Agent Carter? Uh, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, from the comic books, sure. I know nothing, yeah. but from the movies, I'm, I just know that she was, uh, you know, he's squeezing Captain America, and since the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show, they've kind of wanted to bump off her own series set during the, well, a- aftermath of the Second World War. Right. Yeah. And I think the way that the show is going to roll is uh, she's going to, she's like part starter of S.H.I.E.L.D. with uh, Stark's yeah. father. Howard Stark. Yeah. Howard Stark, and I think that they, I think they hit skins or something. I'm and you sure. get to meet the uh, Jarvis the person. <laughs> yeah, the... Jarvis mm-hmm. the person. You're right. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Also, who eventually, uh, who eventually the voice I think is going to become Vision. Yes, in, in he is. I read an interview with him, and apparently, what used to happen was he wouldn't get the whole script. They'd just give him like his lines, and about four weeks or so before the movie was due to come out, he'd just go in a sound booth, say his lines, and that was, that was him done. He's never actually watched the Avengers or Iron Man. No! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now he's a lot more involved, and obviously be a lot happier I would these hope days. So. I would hope so. Mm. Also, Magneto confronts Cyclops in the first look at the Uncanny X-Men 29. That would be happening. And what does he, he say to him? Do you know? Uh, no, I do not have that <laughs> issue. I'm, hey, I'm reading, off, I'm reading titles, titles off here. You said to get news, I brought news. I have. It's a skim of news, but it's news. It's all right. Uh, mm, much better than last time. <laughs> the Hulk puts down everybody in the new preview uh, preview of the Hulk 9. I think you're turning Jabba on. Keep going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thor's defeated. Iron Man's armor is shattered. And Thing's head is detached. Mm. Thing's That's... head is detached. Why does he get yeah. beheaded? What what happened there? Well, he didn't get beheaded. He got detached. All right. Different. Yeah. Well, yeah, means, but he's he still could... alive? Yeah, he's made of rock, so I'd assume he could just put it back together and it'd be like clay. Yeah, but I always thought there was something Stand underneath water? that rock. Like. <laughs> Just add water. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Grow your own thing. You're turning um, time on with that yeah, comment. But... I don't know. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> I figured the thing had some kind of spinal thing going on under there. It wasn't just rock. You know, like he had some yeah. kind of meatloaf in there. You yeah, know? did you know, uh, a few years back, sack. Stanley actually confirmed that things, that uh, manly parts, did actually... Turn to rock? Yeah. So he's like permanently erect. Wow. Really? All systems go. <laughs> Doesn't everybody want that? <laughs> mm. I don't want to. No way, bro. That would hurt. That, yeah, I mean, come on. You walk around with you a boner all day? Oof. Yeah. Yeah, true. You know, that Stink would Fist would like that, probably. It, it, I'm not it sure, would but. chafe, right? I mean, <laughs> well, you'd have to go commando all the time. You'd, yeah. have to, you'd have to wear a little band On top of that, you bump into something, you rip your pants, and boom, you're all out, showing to the world. <laughs> mm. Mm. That would you'd have to have a powerful thing like what's it, guys? Guys, yeah. the Fantastic Foursome. <laughs> <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> hey, 
<laughs> yeah, Bazinga. we haven't heard that one before. Thanks, James. <laughs> uh, okay, Guardians, Guardians 3000, issue 3, a preview teases a new Nova. I've actually seen a, um, a, a funny th- image of this. It's Spider-Man interacting with the new Nova. And he says, the last guy who wore that helmet was called Richard Ryder. There's a joke in there, but you're probably too young to get it. Dick Ryder. Yeah, that was like so 1980. Hey, it's it's comic news. (laughs) It's good, it's good. And uh, (laughs) you're out of time, my friend. (laughs) Really? uh, Really? I mean, don't. Wait, what do you got more? Tell me. Yeah, I've got my I've got my own stuff now. That's the news done. Oh. My own stuff. My favorite comic this week has definitely been Spider Verse. Well, Spider Verse One, my f- favorite one for a while. I'm absolutely loving the art style from. Do I remember? I'm loving the art style from. Oh my god, I forgot his name. Jesus. Oh you well. Have to write these things down, James. <laughs> I know. I, I, by the way, I'm loving the new art style. I'm loving the ink work. I'm loving the artwork. And it's fantastic. It's. I prefer, I prefer it to um, Ramos's in Superior just because it feels more, I don't know, it feels more Spider-Man now. It feels more why. real? Yeah, it feels more homey. Gotcha. <laughs> mm. Well, that's good. It's nice. It's, mm. That's very warm and fuzzy. Mm. James, mm. is there any little cottages around you? <laughs> uh, I really don't want to answer that. Oh, come on, please. <laughs> There's about five. Really? Yeah. Oh, thatch, oh. thatch roofs and all. I want, I want a little cottage. Yeah, you know, that that's roof, big blocky clay, not clay, like you know, yeah, b- really badly done clay window sills. You know, the tip, stereotypical white windows with a pie on the shelf. Huh. As you as you walk past, the smell wafts. Oh, wafts. that's great! People actually do that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I come to England, can you bring me to a cottage? Uh, I will, but in England we are not friendly, and I would probably get you know. Kicked oh. off their property for you know staring in awe at their cottage. <laughs> you don't you don't think the English will like me? Uh, I don't know. It, it depends if you you know. What if I'm like my name is Mister Tomes? Tomes. Yeah, instead of Tombs, I go Tomes. My name is Mister Tomes, and I'm batshit crazy. My name is Mister Tomes. <laughs> Tomes, Jared Tomes. Ba-da, ba-da. No. Um, Big no, I, I know the Tomeses. Ah <laughs> <laughs> right, yes, you live up there, yes? Huh? Yeah, uh, no, I don't, I don't. I don't think they would uh, appreciate that. No. You could stand at their window and just do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I think they'll uh, open uh, arms, uh, welcome you into their home. Yeah. Uh, so to finish up on my comic bit, I'm absolutely loving Spider-Man at the moment. He's his comic world is really taking off a Spider Verse, and I'm basically going to bury myself. In the crevices of Spider-Man, he did the it. Next ding, month. ding! You use the word crevice. Crevice oh, of the yes. day. That's the word of the week. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, crevice of the week. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I, as far as I can remember, crevice has been the word ever since I started on this show. <laughs> you're right. You're right. I, I think M2 wants something a little bit more intelligent instead of this kind of conversation. Do you M2? <laughs> Get in your corner. That's your corner, You're turning man. Turning on Jabba there, stink fist. Keep talking. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I think it's about time for our uh, movie quote. I was hopefully we we're having Danny call him, but I uh, I think he's running kind of late. So yeah, I, I don't know this Danny quote. I'm sorry. It's okay. Goodbye. It's good. Cool. It's, it's quite quite all right. So so we have a, a theme that we go on every month for our movie quote. Um, give us a call in two zero one five eight zero three seven one two. Uh, to win yourself a T-shirt from the Jedi Knight Academy, um, there was a specific one that Danny told me. Uh, it was like a Sith or Jedi one. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. I apologize. But uh, we're also offering, courtesy of um, Corrosive Radio, the super uh, no original NES Goonies two. Now we've been trying to give this thing away for Still? some time now. And uh, probably because you, you go to eBay, you can get it for ninety nine cents. But it, you win it here for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really not all that rare. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you what. Thought it was when I bought it. If somebody calls in and wins it, I will grab a rare exclusive NES game out of my attic. Whoa! I won't tell you what it is, but it will go in. It'll the be package. a surprise. It'll go in the package. Can okay. I have a black lotus? <laughs> I don't know if I have that, sir. I don't know. <laughs> Um, I have a pendulum of, I don't know. All kinds of different swag. Yeah. 
But uh, so the theme for this month um, is going to be, and you guys are probably going to laugh at me here, but in lieu of the holiday season, it is Christmas, and uh, surprisingly, James celebrates Christmas is also over there in the UK. Um, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Except in in Britain it's different because on Christmas Day what we actually do is we actually go out catch our food we get we get the guns out we ride the horses we get the foxes we shoot the turkeys and it's just it's wonderful I mean it's fantastic <laughs> and and you have like an overabundance of woods to do this in no yeah I mean I, I don't know how it happens as soon as you go into a woods it doesn't end until you catch up catch what you're really the broken so, yeah. so you just frolic into the woods like in your pajamas <laughs> yeah and on it, Christmas Day. Yeah, and like if you if you trip like if you trip over, somehow you end up in full hunting gear. And you chap your nipples. You can't win a you can you don't win a marathon without putting a few band aids on your nipples. So, <laughs> so going on with the theme for the month, it's going to be cartoon because we're a bunch of geeks and we all love cartoons. Cartoon Christmas movies. Oh, all right, that should make me think. Yeah, so, Charlie uh, Brown Christmas? <laughs> so yeah, That's a movie. That's a cartoon. Garfield Christmas? So anyway, let's play Bang the clip in. for you guys. 201-580-3712. You give us a call, win the swag, and here's your clip. How would you like to be a spotted elephant? Or a choo-choo with square wheels on your caboose? Or a water pistol that shoots jelly? We're all misfits. How would you like to be a bird that doesn't fly? I'd swim. Or a cowboy who rides an ostrich. Or a boat that can't stay afloat. We're all misfits. Don't say that. anything, Tombs. No, no, like hell, I don't even know what the hell it is. Tombs gave yeah. me the last Tombs. Week. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody was going to call in anyway. Oh, wait. <laughs> Somebody did call in. So, uh, womp, womp. Yeah, thanks, mm, for the, womp, womp. thanks for that, Tombs. Um, so if you guys know the answer to this, it's a holiday Christmas movie. A horror trailer. 201-580-3712. Um, Stink, do you know what it is? Stink, are you there? No idea. No idea? <laughs> All right. So nobody knows what it is, and that's good. <laughs> um, you gave away, like, five minutes of the movie. Well, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the whole point of a movie quote. If you're that good, you can win. Yeah, it's like, it's like when people used to play, like, clips of a song, and you had to guess what it was. Yeah. It's named that movie. It's always Crazy Train. <laughs> the song? Always. It's How'd always... you give it away, man? <laughs> it's always um, Crazy Train. Mike. No, that's not the name of this movie, so sorry, James. Crazy Train's a song by <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne. He doesn't, he doesn't know anything train. about Ozzy. Isn't Ozzy British? <laughs> yeah, I, and I also know that he bit off a bat's head because he's awesome. Hey, that was a fake. Who cares? With ketchup. It was said later on, yes. Lots, oh. lots of ketchup. I lost all respect for him. <laughs> and the thing was, it wasn't even Heinz, it was Hunt. Oh, even it. In England, even we use Heinz. Oh, see that? See it's that? Amazing thing. It's the mightiness of the Heinz. We have standards. Yes, you do, sir. And and I'm much American obliged to... American consumerism. That's so it. That's so what America's based on, <laughs> consumerism. That's yeah, it. We, we also have Twinkies here, and I cannot stand Twinkies. Wait, wait, wait. James, tell us of a very delicious food that you have that we don't have and we probably don't know about. Vegemite. Something awesome. Do you have black pudding? Black pudding? Uh, that yes. sounds disgusting. That, that does sound disgusting. What is it? <laughs> it's a, uh, well, I, love I, wait, I love pudding. From what I'm going to tell you now, you'll think it's disgusting. Okay, tell me. Caviar? It's essentially pig's blood made into essentially a salami, and it tastes awesome. A salami? Yeah, essentially, because they get the, the hemoglobin from the blood, mix it into a, a powder of sorts, mix all the things in there, and it's black. That's what we call black pudding. And you cook, you grill it. And... Gee, has it fully coagulated yet? Uh, Yeah. Gee, gross. Do you have Vegemite there? Uh, I think we call it Marmite. 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 Some of the uh, differences we'll, between our cultures are so well, vast. No, that's Australian, yeah. but I, I figure, you know. I was expecting to hear something yummy, not blood and organ. Okay, you want to hear something yummy. Uh, Do you have you see, things cheese? that I think are tasty, you guys will just go, ew, no. <laughs> well, nah, that's the whole point here. It can't be that different. Uh... Mm, I'm I, after this, I'm gonna search British foods that you that guys don't have because I don't know what you don't have. We have um, 
All right, it's not from America. It's yeah. made in England. Now <laughs> seems like a good time to do the uh, a Pulp Fiction quote about the uh, Royale cheeseburger. <laughs> uh, that's not true. I went to Canada, French Canada, and I said, can I get a Royale with cheese? And she looked at me like I had two heads. Really? Seriously? It's like a... Le- it's because you didn't say, can I have a Royale with cheese, I? That's, she, she, was, she spoke hey. French. She didn't speak English. <laughs> she goes, it's like le quartet, and however you say cheese in French. I was like, that's not a Royale with Fr- cheese. Fromage. Fromage. Fromage with cheese? I was like, that's not a Royale with no, cheese. No, no so fromage I, is cheese, Mike. I had, I know, but not, a, not no. in, in French so Canada, I, I was like, can I get so a Royale with I meant other Mike. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> this is going to get so confusing. <laughs> so, uh, the point. But, that's why we call him M2. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let's let's move it along here. Let's stay on target. So <laughs> we have two zero one five eight zero three seven one two. Give us a call. Guess this movie quote. Win some swag. Um, swag. Some swagalicious stuff. Uh, at this point in time, I want to get into the movie trailer, the Star Wars movie trailer, because I've seen two of them. The first one I saw like Thursday. And then the second one came out on that Friday. The first one was that um, fan made, the fan made trailer, which was pretty badass. I thought it was better than the uh, the actual. It was it was more revealing than the actual trailer, which you know that should be. I the mean, actual trailer just showed some black dude in the desert or something. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I mean, I we don't want to sound shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't want to sound racist, but it seems like they're being a bit overly diverse with showing a black storm. Yeah, it's like, hey, we got a black guy. Yeah, we do. I mean, but, but it's the only I'm pretty the sure the original stormtroopers stormtroopers were black as well. But don't you think that he could have just stolen the outfit and put it on? Like that's, <laughs> oh, not, that's oh, stereotypical. Oh, oh, oh. That's the first thing that I no. <laughs> that's what I thought too. Yeah, yeah I, like, like, I actually like, thought uh, he may be a Jedi dressed up as a stormtrooper. Like Han and Luke put them on in episode <laughs> four, and I figured he did the same thing. I was like, oh, they're trying to be like episode four. Episode well, four. I heard a little rumor that he's a stormtrooper. Going rogue mm. against well, the Empire. That's what I. That's the. Aren't they clones anyway? So how could a clone? They're go not. Rogue? Clones well, no. Anymore. After um, Return of the. Oh, no, I'm sorry. After the Clone Wars and Kamino was destroyed. taken or destroyed, they stopped making clones and started recruiting actual people because oh. mm. they couldn't make enough clones fast enough to uh, take expand. over the universe. Yes, but now that yeah. that's not canon anymore, who knows where they can go with this? I think See, you overestimate their chances. <laughs> See, it's that but self That's, that's what I was essence. wondering. The, the black guy, I thought it was supposed to be all clones. Well, we just and you're saying Camino was destroyed during the Clone Wars? No, so? it was destroyed after. Afterwards. But, but that's not after. canon anymore, according to the mythos. The it's, EU is gone. Because those are written in Star Wars. They're legends now. So. Yeah. Now, one huge thing that we are not going to have in these new movies is Master Yoda. But he, he could be, no be spirit, though. What, spirit Yoda? Yeah, running around? yeah, yeah. that's true. It could be that's a spirit true. Yoda. And the first scene was very, you know, Star Wars-esque because of Tantooine. I think it's Tantooine. looks like the desert. But, I mean, as soon as he popped his head up and it was like, <laughs> I thought Spaceballs right away. <laughs> Me too. So I was like, yeah, yeah I wasn't thinking Star Wars. I was thinking <laughs> Spaceballs. Me too, exactly. Comb the desert. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, Nothing over here, sir. He's got the little pick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Use the Schwartz. Um, I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. Um, <laughs> so that's what I thought when I first saw it. And then, and then it started getting into it a little deeper. Um, the, 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 chick, the chick riding, the speeder. You know, that was a little glimpse. Still, I thought it was Tantooine. Who and, do you think that chick is? Uh, there's some rumors going around mm. that it's... Leia and Han's daughter. Yeah. Um, well, Luke and Leia's mutated child. Yeah, you know, who knows? <laughs> but I hope so. <laughs> then, I mean, but they didn't show any of the original cast in this, in this trailer. Not a, not, not a bit. Well, um, didn't you hear, don't you hear Harrison Ford when the Falcon goes over or no? Am I going crazy? Uh, Maybe. I don't know. Is I that your old, voice, old voice over the whole thing you're talking about? No, no, no. When, the, when you see the Falcon at the end, don't you hear it Harrison goes, Ford? Bam! And then ah, I broke my leg. Ah. <laughs> People are telling me they heard Harrison Ford, but I don't know if that's because I didn't hear it. So I, I didn't know hear it. Crazy, no, right? I watched it like a million times. All right, I got to slap somebody. And I might be wrong. I don't, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I missed that part. There, you know, I look at X wings. Short there. round. Give me a crutch. The X wings shot was pretty cool. I but don't. The one thing that I was uh, 
I guess it, it could have been just the shot that they were shooting it from, but you didn't see any astromech droids in the X-wing fighters. That's that's kind of stupid if they're going to do that. I think it might have been the angle. Uh, but I'm I'm hoping it was just the angle that they shot the scene in. Um, now the fan made uh, video actually showed Luke, didn't it? Oh yes. yeah, it showed older version Luke with yeah. like the beard. Exactly. And uh, how the hell did they get that footage? I, I mean, anything can be photoshopped nowadays, bro. You think that's just all bullshit footage? But I mean, they could have just taken photos and off of Twitter, man. They're, they're, like they're, they're doing right. all kinds of crazy shit. They did a really good job with it, though. That's the funny thing. The like, trailer was really good. The fan made one. Yeah, that's that what was I'm really saying. Cool. It looked, I like. It looked legit. You know, like the footage looked legit. That's why. It was... Well, they called, they quoted the international edition. Yeah. So. Hmm. And then they had the dark trooper in yeah, the, in that, that one. Cool. Yeah, that, that was, was really bad, sweet. Yeah. Um, it was like a stormtrooper had sex with a Cylon and made a mm. yeah. made a made a baby thing. <laughs> Stormtrooper got dirty. <laughs> dirty little stormtrooper. <laughs> uh oh, we're turning Jabba on. <laughs> Bushuda. Bruschetta? Bushuda. I don't even know what he's J- saying. Jabba there. don't like Bruschetta. I wish I could speak Jabba? Hut language. But I got a Klingon dictionary. Wrong, really? wrong movie, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got one at a flea market for three bucks. It star something, it's fine. <laughs> um, and then that the final scene. No, not the final scene. The the one scene with uh, it's a Sith Lord, with the you know, know the that. new and improved lightsaber that they have with the hilt with the extra two sabers coming out, the little wee wees, mm. and uh, yeah, the little, uh, the little guards, guards, the little guard. Uh, yeah, um, broadsword. They were talking about like that guy being yep, an Inquisitor. I don't think so. So, so I mean, that was just the buzz on the web. So, but, Mike's, both of you, do you have a problem with the new lightsaber or no? I like it. No, I think it's yeah. pretty cool and. I, Sorry, I don't know if anybody's been on Facebook and seen that meme yeah. of, like, the new lightsaber and then, like, the most improved lightsaber. And it's got all these, like, crazy things. One's like a, a tennis racket. <laughs> all these crazy, like, looking lightsabers. But, no, I think it looks cool. I mean, if you think about it, you know, it will actually protect his hand. You know, those Count. little spokes coming out, you well, know, yeah. it should protect his hand. You know? Or he'll burn himself on it, one or the other. I heard two things that it could be uh, because there's two pieces of metal, right? And then they come out. Either they're ex- the lightsaber's more powerful, and it, they're exhaust like it's an exhaust, so that releases the excess energy. Oh, so there's actually a scientific uh, yeah, explanation. explanation for or this. Or huh? that they're uh, wherever the lightsaber crystal is in, it's part of a continuous beam. So because those are there, they act as um, kind of like uh, you know how you can hit somebody with the hilt of a gun or the handle of a gun. Yeah, yeah. pistol kinda whip. Like the, Kind of like the same thing, so that way if you and I lock lightsabers and, you know, almost like nose to nose and they're like this, you can essentially cut their throat. Right. Mm-hmm. Kind of like Very yeah, cool. a little yeah. slit action. So it, it's like, ah, to, he did it. <laughs> kind of like trying to show some practicality to this thing. It, it has its benefits. I mean, it yeah. looks cool. But yeah, it does. It does. First thing I thought was, does that have a purpose? But now that we dig into it a little bit, it does. You know, it has... Have you seen the uh, other image where instead of the spokes being out in a T shape, someone has edited it so it's in a, a V shape, like the one on the right points up to the left, and one on the left points off to the right, and to make it like look more like a broadsword rather than a different sort of sword. That would be cool. It's uh, that's yeah. that's the one that the one that they're showing is a long sword. Yeah, from what I there understand. But I, I broadswords and long swords get a get a well get get a. Eh. I, I got marbles in my mouth. That's long, all, folks. Long swords and broad swords get along really well. <laughs> Do they? I yeah. really like how the internet <laughs> kind of blew up about a, a fake laser sword that, you know, doesn't exist yeah. in, a, in, a, yeah, in a world that. that, you know, is real. And people took it to heart like it was, you know. I was just going to actually touch life. on that. That I heard, I seen this article about a, a real life lightsaber. Um, and the only thing that they were missing. Was the crystal? Did it, you hear that? They they kind of like had like the prototype thing. Yeah. Going. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So the only thing they're missing is the crystal to give it that energy and take that energy out of it. But the whole I have actually a, a pamphlet when I uh, when I was younger of how to build a lightsaber. But when yeah, I, I remember that in high school. Yeah, and when you I you didn't get very far. No, and I tried I like applying it, and it just it just the science was so off. <laughs> yeah. He really needed a, a welder, you know, <laughs> somebody w- who worked with metals, you know, a blacksmith or whatever, because um, we didn't have those capabilities. 
Not at all. Not at no, all. sir. Just tin foil and bubble wrap. <laughs> I mean, we had some door hinges, a couple uh, screws. I mean, there wasn't much, you know. Back in the 80s? No. <laughs> Uh, moving moving along here, we have uh, the last scene that I want to talk about is the, uh, of course, the Millennium Falcon shooting out with the Star Wars music we all know and love. Um, what do you guys think about the Falcon? I mean, that looked looked all right. It had a couple little uh, little things added to it. Yeah, upgrades. You know, I was, so, I was something felt off to me. Yeah, I, I, I kind of felt off a little too, and that's why I bring it up. I mean, you know, the Tie Fighters looked cool. You know, that was all fun, and you know, it looked a little too CG-ish to me. It was all very CG, but also you got to remember now when he redid, when Abrams did, redid Star Trek, you know, it it kind of reminded me of Star Trek that whole mm. scene. You know what I'm saying? Like where uh, I think it was the Enterprise just falling out of the sky, right, or something like that, and. uh it just, just just the whole scene and the whole feel of it was Felt very Star Trekky, also. Mm. But I guess that's I guess we're gonna get that because it's Abrams. You know what I mean? Here yeah, we did Star Trek. They were good. Right. They were good. I, I liked them. I liked them. I, look, I'm I'm a Star Wars fanatic. I love it. I'll blast all over it. But uh, mm. <laughs> you know, Star Trek. I I never really could get into. I liked watching. Um, which one was it? Not the original, but Next Generation. Mm-hmm. I liked watching that one, and then I didn't watch it again because then they came out with like all these other spin-offs, Deep Space Nine, Enterprise, yeah, yeah whatever other ones. I never even watched the first episode of Enterprise because uh, that was like a prequel to the movie, wasn't it, or something like that? It was a, a prequel to the original series. To the original series, yeah. Okay, uh, um, but yeah, I, I just I just feel like what we're gonna see from now on. Is going to be like an intermingling vision. O- only in episode seven because he's not directing episode eight. Really? Yeah, it's somebody else. Who? I, I don't know. I, 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 I think it's the guy news. who did Godzilla, if I'm not mistaken. Who? Gareth Edwards. Is that good or bad? Uh, I don't know. It's That's horrible. weird. It's really horrible, random. Right? Yeah. Can I can I read a quote from uh, from Bernie Burns of Rooster Teeth? This is the one that I found yes. hilarious on the internet. It's. Uh, Hey guys, there's a new feature on the made up laser sword that might not be realistically functional. And uh, that was in response to everybody freaking out about the lightsaber. I had to find <laughs> it. It was bothering me. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, the whole scene itself was pretty cool. You know, like, and then uh, and flying through the air, and then, you know, it just cuts out. So, I mean, that whole scene was pretty cool. You'll I'm get- anticipating the full length trailer, which Age will be about Ultron. three minutes. Mm. Age of Ultron. They said that it will be. That's when it's going to play, right? right? Yeah, right. Yeah, in the release of that. Most of those movies that weekend, I think they're going to play it. In. I think anything that Disney owns, or that too. Yeah, because I, I don't know. If, I don't know if they'll <laughs> you put mean it on every the movie. movie? <laughs> I, 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 pretty much. I read that they're going to put it right in front of uh, Age, of, right before Age of Ultron. So, because that's what everybody's going to go see. It, so everybody's going to see this trailer, right? So they're going to go like to the Frozen sequel and just be blasted with Star Wars. Yep. So all those little girls can be like. Oh. I, I don't. I don't have to like Frozen anymore because I'm a girl and I'm independent. Yay! I don't want to be bad, but I, there's a lot of that going around in where I live. Everyone's like, "Oh, girls shouldn't have to only have girl toys." So, sort of stuff. I, but I, I actually agree with that. I mean, I, I like uh, think Ninja Turtles is a, is a multi-sexual. Multi-sexual. No, what is it? A unisex toy. <laughs> multi-sexual. <laughs> unisex toy. <laughs> What are these turtles doing, Mike? <laughs> Here's I don't know what you guys shell. do with your turtles, but oh, oh, Leo, oh, oh, where's, half. where's Jabba? No, 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 Jabba, no more Jabba. Jabba's playing. Jabba's getting turned on. No, man, they already went three times. <laughs> Dale. Uh. Sorry, Jabba. Peace, Jabba. So, uh, <laughs> peace. Uh, to get it in a little bit right now, I just want to get into a little bit of science talk, uh, space science talk. You know, you're bored, Jared. I know. I'm not bored. But uh, we had this uh, shuttle lift off of o- Orion, the Orion spacecraft, the Orion which is going to replace the Apollo spacecraft by NASA. It did its mm-hmm. test launch today, and it just successfully landed into the water, into the ocean. Uh, it will. 
be the first spacecraft to take a man to Mars in 2030. Right. And you were telling me just before that you actually signed up for this? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> there was a private um, company, I, I, I guess. Yeah, because everything's privatized. private now. organization that wanted to send uh, a couple, a man and a woman, preferably married couple. Just, to, just a couple. That's it? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think they sent a man or a woman. They wanted to send some, two people that were in a relationship. Because they figured if you're going to be in space for six to nine months, then you got to be with somebody who you're not going to, you know, kill each other. Mm. But I guess they didn't think that far ahead, and you know, realize that married couples together alone for nine months, they'd be having a lot of sex in zero gravity. That's for sure. I, I think that's one of the experiments. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can. You were able to sign up, and I think a hundred thousand people or a hundred thousand couples mm-hmm. signed up. Uh, I don't know where that went from there on out, but I signed up, and then I asked the missus. I said. Uh, you want to do it? She said no. I was like, I'll go by myself. <laughs> and uh, they said that it could potentially be a one-way trip. Like you, you might not come There's back. There's no return. So I was like, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fine. I'll make history. I'll be the first person <laughs> on Mars. I'd be down. Sorry, we could do a, a by satellite uh, interview right. with you. A- absolutely. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Speak, speak Geek blast, blast, Mars edition. Uh, and I'd go find the aliens. <laughs> See, that reminds me of a, of a Rooster Teeth sketch where Gus went to Mars and just didn't talk to anyone else with him out of spite. <laughs> <laughs> like, he just sat on Mars, he drew a line down the center of Mars and went, you stay on that side, I stay on this side, and just sat there not talking to anyone. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, but I think I think the whole thing is, like, super cool. Like, I'm a huge s- space dork. Um Obviously, I like Star Wars, you know. And as Stinkfist tells everybody, I want Star Wars to be real, which is true. Um, who doesn't, really? Come on. The, Maybe it already was real. The British are trying to send a man to the moon. Uh, I read It's it not going to work. Between 2018 and 2028. <laughs> I think it's 2018, but they want to send it soon. Well, I thought that this mission was to test out things, and they're going to be putting like a, a, some kind of spacecraft together in space. Like, they're going to shoot up a bunch of parts up there, and then that's going to be the craft that takes people to Mars. That could be. I, I think this I, is... I know the, I read that. This, this was something the, like that. The, the capsule that holds the... the yeah, the, the astronauts. Right. Uh, and they tested to see how it would work with entry and re-entry. And I think this capsule was the one that won the uh, X Prize. That I don't know. If I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong. But, uh, but I know Richard Branson's trying really, really hard to get yeah. people into space. After hey. that test launch, I don't think anyone's going to be doing it. I'd do it in a heartbeat. Absolutely, I would do it. Really? With a chance to just blow up on the pad? Yeah. Team America, baby. I watched that today now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you enjoy it? AJ, AJ. <laughs> now just touch it. <laughs> I think that, that song I'm just be kidding. our new national anthem. <laughs> What, AJJs or America, fuck yeah. America, fuck yeah. And then you yeah. just play it right at the Olympics, and then, you know, every other country would just be like, well, here's the gold. Yeah. <laughs> they just yeah, just blow up the Olympics. So it's okay, we got the terrorists. Just like craters everywhere. All right, well, let's move it along here to Toombs' uh, game reviews. What do you got for us, Toombsy? Yeah, I'm just watching Brendan play Destiny here. He's driving me crazy. I wish I could, you know... Mm-hmm. Help Take him out off here, him and do tell him what to do. First time, Tombs. Be gentle with me. I know, I know. <laughs> you got one shot off on that walker there. I saw that. Do you hate it? I didn't know that. I didn't realize that was a public event. Oh yeah, they they throw them at you here and there. But you're in patrol mode, basically, where you just walk the lands and uh, take different little missions and upgrade your crap. So it's not like the full. You're not following the actual story right now. It's, it's well, I'm, I'm in I'm in geek blast mode. That's what I'm in. <laughs> Are you? All right. That's he's the way just, to be, brother. He's blasting all over the game. Oh, grab but that orb. Here's uh, if you guys are are uh, on Twitch, go to Twitch, subscribe to our Twitch account, watch us play games upon games, whatever Twitch allows us to play, because there are some things we cannot play. Really? That's yeah. That's what. It's, that's, so I probably that's the rule, baby. Really. Um, but yeah, go to our Twitch account and just type in Geek Blast, subscribe, watch. We're going to be there for a long time coming. Oh, so when I get home, I'm going to try to put on some explicit games and see what happens. Try it'll it'll probably say, this game is not compatible. Try anything with Nintendo and go from <laughs> there. <laughs> um, so what do you got review for us this week, Toops? Uh, what do I got? What do I got going on, man? Um... I don't actually have any reviews, but a couple games did come out. Mm-hmm. Um, one is The Crew, which I'm really not all that interested in because I've kind of you know, lost my way with racing games. But this one is a little bit different. Um, 
that takes place across the whole U.S. and it's basically you know it revolves around underground racing. So you know you'll you'll go against other gangs, you'll create gangs, you know what I mean, and um, basically do the whole Fast and the Furious thing. I believe um, it's got mediocre reviews from what I saw. You know, mostly kind of six to sevens, you know, across the board. Um, I don't know. I probably won't play it unless, you know, it's deeply reduced, you mm. know what I mean, price-wise. And, yeah. uh, you know, maybe a couple couple months down the, down the uh, line. Usually, you know, when mediocre reviews happen, a cheaper game follows, you know. So I'll look forward in a couple months and maybe give an official review on it. Also, the Game of Thrones episode one was released, and from fire and ice, right? Yeah, ice and ice and fire or something. Fire, iron and uh, ice. Iron, iron and ice. yep, and ice. iron from ice. So, from what I'm hearing is, Michael, you could have gotten it for free. Yeah, yeah. That's... What the frick, man? <laughs> what it's all communication, my friend. Um, so Michael has a special bond going on with Telltale Games, and they give him all the swag for free, and he didn't grab. This no, particular no, you're mistaken. I, I get these things through Brigade Marketing. So Stinkfist gets these games through Brigade Brigade Marketing. Brigade Marketing, correct. And, and what is that? It's well, it's it's the marketing firm that all of these uh, uh, gaming companies use, and also a lot of movie uh, studios use. And you could have got Borderlands, the first episode, and Game of Thrones, the first episode. Now is it too late? Can we be tardy? I'm sure we but, can. No, be tardy. tardy to the party. There's no point. They were they, they were meant to be given out for review purposes. Right. Oh, so thing. if you get one, they expect you to review it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah oh. See, that's what I thought. Oh. No, no, I'll review it. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'd give a review on it anyway if I was to play it, right? So. They probably want a typed review. Oh, uh, do they? They want actual <laughs> work done. Dragon speak. Yeah. So anyway, the um. The first episode, I believe, is a couple hours long, and there is actually a major decision to be made within the first ten minutes that has Mm -hmm. you feeling all weak on your knees through the the uh, two-hour gameplay, supposedly. I don't know what it is, but I heard Uh, some people were crying, some people were taking it very seriously. I don't know. Do you have any info on that, James? Yes. I've been watching a playthrough uh, by a guy called Duke Nukem, and the decision is pretty... uh... It's a pretty gory one. Is it? What actually happens? Uh, your fellow squire is okay. is gets well. Is you get ambushed and you're you're with your fellow squire, mm-hmm. and your option is warn him, save him. Sorry, warn him, run, or jump and save him. If you warn him, I don't know what happens. If you save him, don't happens. But if you just run away, do you know anything? <laughs> Uh, yeah, if, on the third op- in the second option they give you, if you run away, he just gets stabbed through the head. So, so this Duke Nukem man's a very cruel, cruel, cruel boy. Damn you, well, Duke. no, because very bad. <laughs> it's um, it's actually like how he has to do it. Like a each decision, from what I've gathered from him so far, he's done a playthrough where he's done his his main decisions, and he's done like what happens if you do other alternate and alternate decisions. Right. And it says ultimately what happens is. Your decisions don't have that much impact on the outcome of the game. It's kind of set that way. Really, I thought in, it did, and that's it, why it was such a big deal. As in, like, no, like it's only very slightly indifference. Oh, that and you, you, also, you don't stick with one character. You jump around from character to character. Like one minute you're a squire, the next minute you're a um, oh bloody hell, yeah, Princess Marjorie, Princess Marjorie's maid. Next minute you're uh, this little, this like. 12 year old lord huh. is, and yeah it just the story likes to jump around breaks up a lot I'd, I'd like to defend my honor for one moment <clears throat> and uh, just just bring to the attention of uh, <laughs> I got this email on the 1st of December it is now the 5th so they would have wanted us to do a review in that 4 day time period which isn't unlikely but uh, could have been possible but just, just didn't happen so yeah Defending my honor. Someone (laughs) didn't keep up on their emails. (laughs) So anyway, um, but the reviews have been decent. Um, Oh, it's a fantastic game. um, Telltale usually does a good job. You know, I played the Back to the Future games. I played the Walking Dead uh, the first season, not the second season. The something, Wolf Among Us, right, that did that? Yeah, that I might not touch. I I was going to say that the graphics are quite similar to it. It's uh, False Fable, the comic. I heard heard it was really good. 
Yeah, that's, maybe I will check it out. But Telltale has a good, uh, they have a good reputation. Um, they're getting better as they make more and more games. Well, that's, uh, that's what happens, though. I mean, the practice makes perfect, right? Their budget started out very small. Yeah. Put it that way, when they were a smaller company. So it's getting bigger, and they're, they're making better games. You know, period. But um, bigger and better. Yeah, I will check out Game of Thrones episode one. I will hopefully have my own review on it by next episode. I actually was watching <clears> some <throat> of the uh, gameplay on Twitch because right. there's a couple guys on there that, that are doing it. But right. uh, from what I saw, it was it very was Walking Dead esque. You know, where you you're no, it was Game of Thrones, bro. That's what I. No, I mean like the way it functions as a game. You know, well, where you talk to all the, the characters. What I was watching, I I think it was just like a cutscene, a couple of different cutscenes, right, and then. I don't know if, like, I never really got to gameplay. Right. But just the cutscenes themselves, like, you know. Were pretty well, that's cool. how their games are. They they play out a lot in, like, story mode almost. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So a lot of times gameplay is minimal, you know, but still you have a lot of decisions to make and stuff like that. Yeah, and that was one of the other things I was seeing, like, during the, during the monologue, or not monologue, but the... Uh, during the gameplay, it was just, like, right. a lot of you choosing right. what to say. What happens you next, know, like. Yeah. You know, oh, you, how dare you tell me I'm fat? You know, it's like, oh, sir, I would never. <laughs> it's option A. Or, or, yeah, you're a fat bastard. You know, it's right. option B. <laughs> right. They have that um, also, they have that kind of feature in um, Bioware's games. Like Dragon yes. Age. Yes. Dragon Age and uh, Mass Effect also. And, you know, they have a lot of those. I think it's a cool feature because it could determine, the, you know, yeah, different the outcomes and the outcome. changes a lot of things. So your, your gameplay experience will be different every time you go through it. Yeah. As right. long as you choose different things. As long as, I mean, there are games out there that do have, you know, it affects the system, you know what I mean? But right. if James is saying, like, with uh, with Game of Thrones, it may not really affect the system, that's a little dif- disappointing, but I'll let you know for sure when I actually play it. Yeah. Well, it has to stick to what happens in the uh, the TV series and books. The TV series overtaking the books. Right. And episode one is set during the third season, uh, during the, the Red Wedding. Hey, okay. All right. And then Good interesting, interesting point of time for yeah. the uh, show. Um, also, Tuesday, I must remind everybody, is once again DLC time for Destiny, Dark Below. Uh, oh, come on, man. Come on. How come you didn't get back into it, man? You hit a 25 and then just pooped out. Yeah, it's because A, I've been busy, and B, I don't really want to get the DLC considering how little I get as an Xbox user. Isn't that a shame, man? That is a crime shame. <laughs> Actually, you get one less strike, but the raids are worth it, man. Once you get to play that raid finally, James, you're, you're going to be happy. Trust me. The James, the, the raid is where is it? Not the James. The raid is where it's at. <laughs> the James is where it's at. The James is where it's at, man. Everybody go yeah, to James. Yeah, come to England. But, uh, <laughs> Whoop. The uh, DLC is called The Dark Below, revolves around the hive god Crota and his reign as a giant clitoris. And uh, <laughs> new strikes, <A> gear, <laughs> giant vulva, swallowing vulva, bus-like vulva. Um, new uh. strikes, gear, story missions, multiplayer content, and... Yes, sir. A raid um, will all be available. No matchmaking still, unfortunately. Um, it'll still be matchmaking through private use only, not uh, actual matchmaking through the public, which is a shame. Fans are asking for it, but they're not getting it yet. I don't know why. It doesn't make any uh, sense. But... I'll be the dumbass to ask. What? I'll be the to ask. What's the difference between private and public? Public is it just not matches good. you. Wait, so is that how, is that why it takes so long to find people? Yes, because yeah. it's finding people that meet your criteria. Ah, oh, you know I mean? well, so, good but, and it isn't. Yeah, but it's it's for people who don't have six friends online at that time, it's a good thing for them. You I know what no I mean? Friends. Exactly. For <laughs> Mike, Mike too here, who is a complete loser, <laughs> he just doesn't have any friends on Xbox. But um. Dude, I had to make like I, I just randomly friended people, you know what I mean, to play the raid because I had I had nobody either. All, all my friends from like Gears of War two days, uh, mm-hmm. they're they're all gone. Like I had a lot gone of gone in dust, right? I had a lot of people from Britain and they just mm-hmm. they they left. Carried on. Yeah. yeah. It, it, the even worst thing is when you're not on the for ages and then they change their name and you're like, uh, are you yeah, such and such? And it's like, oh, I've changed my name like three times since then. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Yes, Dark Below Tuesday. I'll be looking forward to it. I'll let you know how it is. Um, my travel guide. <gasps> this is Tooms' tantalizing, deep twisting travel guide. If you're looking for something to play and you've played everything, I'd go back to 2001. Little uh, developer called Remedy. Also uh, developed um, that game that 
Brendan played recently with the flashlight. You burn off the uh, the blackness. <laughs> Alan Wake. Alan Wake, yes. Alan Wake. That wasn't 2001. No, no, no. I'm talking about Remedy, the developers of that game. Oh, yeah. oh. They developed the original Max Payne, and uh, it was published by Rockstar. It wasn't developed by Rockstar. Um, we played that. Oh my god! For probably revolutionized gaming. It did the the vibe it gave the the Valkyr drug that I've been taking ever since. The slow motion. Yeah, the, the slow motion, the bullet time effect. The first time it was in use, so it just wowed us. So we were like, you know? you're in the Matrix, man. <laughs> yes, even though at that time graphics Roll were... Roll another! <laughs> it, was, it was heavily influenced by the Matrix, that bullet time effect, but um, just the vibe of the game, it was snowing the whole time, and the music, yeah. and the environments, it just... I mean, it probably wouldn't do that to me now if I was to put it and on. And it was gory, too. I mean, it, it was gory. Yeah, it was gory. It was, it was a good game. But do you recall the uh, cinematics in between the missions where it showed the comic strips? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that was cool. It was cool. It was yeah. different. You know, I loved it. I mean, I love for them to actually come but they out. They made with the... that movie then too. Who, um... Yeah, which didn't do it justice. No, not at all. You know, it was Mark Wahlberg it was, flick. It was okay. It, it was okay. It was average. There was a lot you know? of uh, game feel to the movie, right? You know, but um, it was missing that that deep dark noir 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 what? Jacar noir Jacar noir feel. <laughs> it's that noir. stinking that stinking. Jakar Noir. <laughs> 1993, baby. Represent. Um, that and Cool Water. So, <laughs> anyway, yeah, it had those cool comic-like panels that were in between. Um, you know, for the time, I think it was revolutionary, like Mike said. And I'd love for them to redo it and have that same feel to it. You know, because Max p 3 came out recently, and it just didn't do it. No. I think it had, like, a tropical setting. Where they got that from? You know, it should have took place in New York with that deep, gritty dark greedy feel you know, yeah but. yeah i think i think the game itself is like one of the games in the forefront of of that slow motion feature because after that game came out every game after it was having that a lot of games had it yeah was, a lot of games you know so yeah. they were ahead of their time i think yes when they when they created the game but well, also yeah, it was also that like you know matrix was just came out at that same time or maybe the second one or something like that i don't remember the actual years but right it was 2001 it was like you know, we played that game to death and for me it was just like i wanted to do the slow motion thing like every single second i could get a chance to do you remember how quickly we went through the second one? Oh it yeah was like that we blew through that thing when we went through we we took time on the first one but the second one we were like it was like nothing it was like an expansion of the first yeah one. and then we were like oh it's over already <laughs> But you could get it on PlayStation Network, Xbox, uh, you know, media or whatever. You know, if you want to download it, I'm sure it's pretty cheap. You know? yeah, it's probably ten, fifteen bucks. Probably, yeah, at the most. That's what the cheapest ones are, like or, fourteen. Or you could get it on Steam if you got Steam Box. The Steam Boxes, are, you know, have been coming out, trickling out. You know? Steam Box. Yeah, or you could go game. to your local flea market and get the Sun Faded Edition for <laughs> two dollars. <laughs> or you could get Tombs's Attic Edition for <laughs> seven thousand. I need to make some dough here. <laughs> It's for the desperate, the desperate only. So, uh, Tombs, tell me about uh, how's, your, how's your staff's coming? I'm working on a new one. Yeah? It's a little slow, but um, it's, it's coming along. It'll yeah. be my first new staff in about two years. I know. I'm excited Since to before see before I moved. Like. I'll tell you right now, it has a hooking effect. Ah. On the top of the staff, it kind of hooks over and what do they carries call the that? stone. That's, that's, there's a name for those type of uh, staffs or canes. What are they called? Septa? Not a yeah, scepter. Make, not a scepter. It kind of has a scepter look to it. But I want to say, I want to say nook. I want, I don't know why I want to say nook, but <laughs> it has a crevice look to it. It's got a nook look. Um, you'll, you'll see. I'll, I'll post some pictures of them eventually. So, so that's been your travel guide. That's my travel guide, right. sir. Play Max Payne. I want to jump into some movies and TV stuff real fast. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, TV, Walking Dead. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, mid season. Mid season. That mm. was that was something else. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Man. Somebody's brains got blonded. I don't really care. I mean, if you haven't seen it by now, then, she's hot then you're, too. You're, she was. You're asked out. She was cute. But I, yeah. I think it was a damn shame what happened to Beth. Yeah, it was sad. I, I, I teared. I don't know how though that she did because she stabbed her in the neck and then she managed to get her gun out of the holster and shoot her in the head. I think as so quickly. I think I think, she, I think as she was going, she already had the gun out, man. But then uh, that couldn't. Do it. But it's really not easy to get a holster like a for for a police officer a cop right, holster is quick. set such a way so that way if you're uh, against the bad guy the bad guy can't just pull the gun out of the holster. 
Uh, yeah, so when I went right. to police that's, class, that's what the first thing they said is like, it's not that easy as it looks in the show. But TV. I think I think she might have already had it out. You know what I mean? She like, probably did. She probably had it. Like she probably had it out already. And when she went to go, <laughs> is boom. Done. But you you would have you would think that Rick and Daryl would have had their aim set on her freaking forehead already. You know, just watching out for something like that. as soon as they saw Beth go. Ch- but they say guns down, yeah. so yeah, everybody had their guns down. Nobody was expecting anybody to shoot. But I'm saying. Somebody should have had their freaking guard up. She had her gun up that quick. Nobody else could have got it up as fast. You know, it sounds like a personal. Come on, man, problem. Viagra, like, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Viagra, yeah. that shit. But um, um, seriously, it was stupid for her to do that. It was stupid. Oh, yeah. they, she could have got out of there. Yeah. Maybe they could have planned something, came back for whoever wanted to get out. Nobody but she left was anyway. Done. But she was done. Like yeah. she was done dealing with that uh, tyrant. You know what I mean? Like she yeah. was done with her. But. She um, asked for it, man. I, I like and I don't think Beth has ever killed anybody human in the show. So that would have been her first uh, real human kill. Did she ever kill Prison people? Riot. Then, then Who did never she kill in the Prison Riot? Wasn't it just random Woodbury citizens? Maybe. Yeah, she may have killed random Woodbury. No, Woodbury's. I don't think she went. She was still in the prison. Yeah, but she... she was she taking care of Judith? No, no, no. Those little girls were. Okay, yeah. She was shooting the gun with Maggie. Yeah. So right. She was had to. So she so probably I, killed humans. But... Yes. I'm, I'm saying, like, doing it up close and personal to shooting them from range, it's a lot different. Yeah. I mean, well, killing another human being is just, you know, killing another I mean, when I do it, it's, <laughs> it's different. <you> know? <laughs> when, I, when I stab someone in the neck, it's a lot different than I'm shooting them from 40 yards back, you know? It's a getting, lot different. It's more personal. A headshot, you, know? you know? It's a lot more personal. Yeah. You can see the whites of their eyes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Right in I front know. of them. Um, and when they sh- twitch and <laughs> crevice. <laughs> But, I mean, so what do you think is going to happen uh, Tooms, now? S- Tooms, I'm sorry to interrupt here. Yeah. When these guys in, in Destiny, when they jump like that and it looks like sparkles coming out from their bottom. Kill them. Yeah. No, no, they're, they're players. I know, shoot them. Right. Well, why do, why, I don't want to kill the fellow players. <laughs> you can't do it anyway, even yeah, if no, you tried. It's, it's, no, but what is that? I mean, is that an upgrade? It's a, you don't have that yet? Double tap X. Oh. Double tap no, X. No, I don't have that yet. Go press, uh, press start. Your options button or start I, button? I can't. I'm in the middle of a battle. No, you're not. Yeah, well, look, no, I'm, I'm, a, you're, I'm on a lag, bro. Uh, uh, I was asking what console. I, th- I, I, they were either asking me what console uh, I was playing on or what console you were talking about, the Max Payne. All right, when you, when you do get to press start, you should be able to go into your, where that glowing sun is. Uh-huh. Hit everything that's upgradable, and one of those should be the double jump, where you get to fly through the air like that. Okay, thank you. I'll let you get back to your show now. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. The, All right, thanks. The Walking Dead, they're... Well, this this whole Atlanta with the police officer scene was not in the comic books, right? So I think they're trying to throw in filler, so they can't go to watch. I mean, spoiler alert, just to let you know, so they don't go to Washington D.C. and see Negan right away. So right, because he's like the next main serious villain. Yeah, he's he's the next one, right. and um, I think his arc should be a little bit long, a lot longer than the governor's actually. But I think they want to do some filler in there. But uh, I think they're going to make their way to Washington, D.C., and I think you're going to meet Jesus in the next half of the season, at mm-hmm. the end. And he's going to explain uh, everything about the um, Alexandria safe zone and what's going on in Washington, D.C. I, uh, I did hear a little, bit of revel- uh, rev- uh, a little bit of good news that actually came out within the last few days. Well, good news to some people, I guess, but uh, Daryl officially is not gay. <laughs> it's come out. He's not gay. He's not a homosexual. But there will be a strong, relevant homosexual figure coming onto the show in the second half. And there is a character in the comics at the safe zone, uh, a, a gay couple, who mm-hmm. play a prominent role in the comic book. Oh, not, not like a major, major role, but a, a significant role. There it is. All right. So, so Daryl Darryl himself is not gay for all the so little ladies out for there. All, uh, for all the homosexuals out there. I mean, Sorry, man. If you're in the zombie apocalypse, make sure you get to that safe spot, and you'll and you'll survive. Unless mm-hmm. you're a badass dude. <laughs> but otherwise, um, I, I think that the whole episode took a turn for the worst. Really, uh, right around the point where um, they lost that guy. Right, right at the end. Right, right at the end when she was like, "Ah." Oh, I want my guy back. You know what I mean? Mm. And we're like, well, that's not part of the deal, you know? Yeah. And right there, I, you knew something bad was going to happen. Yep. I mean, um, I didn't think Beth was going to die. No, I didn't think I so thought, I thought there might have been just like a, like a gun battle or something. Or I thought, you know, to be quite honest with you, Rick hasn't lost his hand in the show. Right. 
And I thought that would have been the moment where he, his hand might have gotten shot or something like that, and that's when he would have lost his hand. Right. But uh, I've heard, I haven't actually read it, that Robert Kirkman said that in the actual, in real life, this wouldn't be practical to walk around with one hand and, you know, be a badass like Rick. They already right. did that with Merle, kind of, you know. I can't see yeah. them really playing that card again. So you know? I think that's why they're not touching that with Rick. But that's, for a moment, I was like, oh, are they going to really chop off his hand or something mm. cool going to happen? But right. I didn't think Beth was going to die. Kirkman said, and I, I saw this uh, either on Talking After, the Walking, Talking, Dead, Talking Dead. Dead, or another interview. I don't remember exactly where, but it was, you know, in the comic, he regretted taking off um, Rick's hand because then, if you notice, um, he had to have Carl there in every scene in the comic to help him with things. Mm. Like that was, you know, that was like one of his regrets. He said. So now that he's mm. doing the show, well, he didn't have to do that. I mean, if you looked at Merle, well, once you chop someone's hand help. off, you yeah, can't. Look at Merle. Uh, Merle had a blade. Yeah. Jamie and he was still a loner, still kicking ass. Yeah. That's because Merle's a bad selling boss, but mm. you know. But either way, it's. Uh, I think it was a good episode. I knew they were going to kill somebody. Yeah, they had to kill somebody. You know, you know when Walking Nobody Dead just died gets the to whole... that point. Yeah, they they get to that point where we got to kill somebody. Yeah, you know. Last season it was Herschel. This season it's Beth. You know. Well, it's only Beth this first half season, so we'll see who's next. To I die. don't think they'll kill anybody else major. They got to kill somebody, Bow. Somebody major somebody. out of Glenn, yes. Maggie, Rick, Carl. They got to kill an original. Carol. No, I don't think so. Beth's it for the season. I think. I, I think it's just Beth, like yeah. primarily. I think something, somebody might ha- something might happen to somebody else. Like they might get hurt, messed up. Right? Yeah, yeah, something like that. But I don't think. I think Maggie's gonna die. No. I don't think so. She's so hot. She's the last super, one. Super. She's the so last super one. Super popular. I don't think I they're gonna kill popular. And they're not gonna kill Daryl, Maggie. I mean, Carl. You spare no lives in, in Apocalypse. Carl. Carl. Damn ass. Carl. Carl in his <laughs> damn hat. Mm. Carl. De- Carl needs to die. They, a lot of people feel that way. They so. need to. Uh, Did I think you see m- the bad lip reading with Carl rapping? No, mm. that sounds hilarious. Mm. <laughs> I think they might need to do another time jump because he's at that age where he's going to start changing, yeah. and his voice is yeah. going to change a lot, and it it's really going is. to it really yeah, it is. Like, oh. yeah. it's go- it's going to change to the point where you're going to be like, hey, you know, a couple uh, two months ago you were like, you know, eleven, now you're like fourteen. What, what happened? <laughs> yeah. mm. You well, got a little mustache going on there, bud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mustachio. I don't like Carl as a character. They should probably just Chandler, Chandler Riggs is a cool guy. Yeah, no, I, I've seen a lot of interviews with him. He's, he's okay. I mean, you know, he's still a young, little, you know, young guy. I, so. I met him. Uh, we talked about Hunger Games. Uh, okay. Yeah, but he he was pretty cool. He was like, yeah, I do. I like the fans. I like the, he likes the attention. I guess. Yeah. Wait, you met him and you talked about Hunger Games. He was reading it. Oh. Well, yeah, he was, was with he his really? da- yeah, he was with his dad, and uh, it was at uh, Monster Mania. And I got there really, really early, and uh, he was just setting up, and his dad was uh, talking to the, I guess, the handler, mm-hmm. and he was just sitting there reading Hunger Games, and he had the book, so I was talking about it, because I just finished it, and uh, yeah, we were just chatting about it, and what he likes about it. Interesting. How yeah. long ago was this? Uh, two years ago, two I think. Years? Okay. Cool, well, man. this, uh, not this year? weekend, but next weekend is the Walker Stalker Con. Can't wait. And uh, Geek Blast will be there. We're, uh, I, I haven't heard anything back on interviews just yet, but I put an interview for um, Michael Rooker. Um, I got my autograph tickets already. I mean, my photo op tickets. Oh, you did? For uh, Chad Coleman, who plays uh, Tyrese. Right. And um, David Morrissey, who plays the governor. Yeah, we put in for an interview for him. Um, yeah, I can't. Uh, I, Andrea what? and Lori. And you can only put Lori, in your interviews Lori for Holden? dead people. Lori, uh... Lori Rick's, Rick's wife. Lori? You have to ask her about Dumb Sarah, and Dumb Sarah Wayne Kellis. Sarah Wayne Kellis. Yes, that's oh, okay. her. Yes, Sarah Wayne Kellis. What about Lori Holden? Who played that's, Andrea? That's Andrea. Yeah. Yeah. You put in one yeah, for her. Put in for her too. Yeah. So uh, we'll get something back. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully we get something back on. Uh, on, on How long did you do it? I was on top of that. Don't worry. Were you? <laughs> How long ago was it? Um, Just out of curiosity. I want to say like the beginning of last month. And nobody got back to you? I no. Not yet. I have a theory that I need to prove at Walker Stalker Con that mm-hmm. Chad Coleman talks in the third person. Okay. At the Comic-Con panel, yeah. uh, whenever he referenced anything, he said Chad Coleman. And then he kept talking. Instead really? of saying I. Yeah, he said Chad Coleman. He never said I. Chad really? Coleman said. And I don't know why he did that unless he talks in the third person and I need to need to find need to out verify that. unless he's like a complete egomaniac I'd, I it'd be great know. to have him on the show so he could start talking in the third person which one's Chad Coleman <laughs> Tyrese yeah uh, Tyrese. Tyrese 
in the comic, he was a, a line, I think, a linebacker for the Atlanta Falcons. And him and Rick had a conversation. How Rick's a Raiders fan, but they never addressed that in the show. And that's yeah. one thing I would ask Robert Kirkman if I could. Oh, that's right. You're a Raiders fan, aren't you? No, I'm a Patriots. Fan. Oh, that's right. You're a Patriots fan. <laughs> Tom, Tom Brady's my Tom Brady's my hero. <laughs> um, all right, so Constantine. Constantine. Have you watched it? I have. Yeah, I've been following it since the beginning. What I'm do you think, it. James? It may not make a second season from what they're saying. I know. I've been tweeting out hashtag save Constantine as much as I can. <laughs> hashtag yeah. let I it die. It. I haven't it watched it. Bad. It's, it's it, decent. I mean, it's... I, I like it. should it. be I on mean, AMC. It should I'm, be on HBO. It should not be on Channel 4. In yeah. NBC. It should not be on NBC uh, basic broadcast, is that what it's yeah. called? Yeah, it, let's put it say, I only so get it in England because Amazon Prime. I think that's it's why it's normal. failing, because it's on readily accessible. Like, Walking Dead would never survive on that channel. But it, it survives on AMC because AMC, they could do more. And I think Constantine, with that character and that type of show, it would survive more on cable or so, on paid right. premium like HBO. Yeah, it needs it's just like Firefly. Yeah, I know what you mean. It, it needs to be able to express itself or at more least than on it does. CW, because Supernatural yeah. has the same similar elements, and they they're True. able to do some some creepy things in that show. Yeah. and it's going on ten seasons already. And, yeah. but Constantine, yeah. Raw, NBC was not the channel to do it. Well, speaking yeah. of the WB or you know Channel Eleven, CW. CW, whatever WB, I call it WB because that's what I grew up with <laughs> with the Dancing yeah. Frog. Um, yeah, <laughs> Dancing yeah. Frog. Um, but Arrow and Flash. Highest these rated two, an these Arrow two, episode yeah. ever. They're they're now did, fighting each other. Did you watch both of them? I didn't watch any there, of them. There was well, a special the first Flash one, one and a special yeah, Arrow. The one. first one was in Arrow, and then the second one was in um, Flash. Flash. And I I only seen the fight scene. It's actually a competition. The it's, flat, com- it's a competition. Yeah, it kind of is. The f- oh. the Flash one came first, Mike. Oh, did it? Yeah, that's how an order goes. In Flash, they established the story for Arrow. Oh, okay, mm, yeah. okay. And they fight each other in Flash. I'm still watching season one of Arrow. I'm, I'm really getting into You're it. Still on one? Well, I have it on Netflix, and I can only it watch like so much TV a day. Peaks, it goes up, it dips a bit, and, and then it I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, a, I'm in a downward, like, uh, kind of boring area, uh, the, but... One of the best endings. The first episode season. of Arrow was really awesome. Yeah, it was yeah. great. It was great. Season two, season two is phenomenal. Yeah. This season so far, I'm kind of... I'm like, eh. Yeah, me too. I'm not getting that vibe that I got from the first couple. I didn't get yeah. to season two, like, I got to, like, binge watch this. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, okay. You they know. still got a lot of time. 23 episodes usually in those in that show, you know. So. I think they'll do well. Um, Stephen Amell is, is great, and uh, now they're doing Laurel as, uh, never mind, I'm not going to tell you. Canary. Yep. Yeah, she's the canary. <laughs> she will be the canary, uh, but uh, so that's how it is in the comics, so hopefully that will be... Good, mm. good segue. Have you found her irritating lately? She's really annoying. Really annoying, right? <laughs> her yeah. voice or what? what just her, her whole, her whole character. You know, the way she is, yeah, she's really annoying. Yeah, it's just she's. I was like, all right, enough already. So she's not hot enough. I want to be a superhero. Eh. You know, it's kind of like that. <laughs> I don't think know? she's attractive. I mean, no. I think she's attractive. She's pretty, but I don't think she's like dropped. I think she gorgeous. used to be pretty. For some was, reason, as she's getting older, she looks a little weird. The you know, girl. Like played. Supernatural days, she yeah. Was hot. Supernatural days, she was really hot. With the blonde hair, yeah. But her, the girl who played her sister, she's she was hot. And with the uh, who played the first Black Canary, you thought she was hot? I thought she was gorgeous. Oh God, no! Those boobs, oh. man. <laughs> yeah, but she had that butt chin. With the... I love oh, butt chin. When she puts that, when she puts the, <laughs> no. when she puts the little mask on, man. Oh man! And this, his, his, his sister's attractive too. Mm-hmm. His sister's cute. Yeah, she chopped her hair. I like John Barlman too. I want to see where they go with him. He's cute too. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, He'll moving do on fun to things some... with you in the photo booth at uh, <laughs> conventions. <laughs> moving on to some movies. I, I just heard and I just read that they wrapped up Superman, Batman. Mm. I can't. I, I'm actually anticipating. I can't wait to see Ben Affleck as Batman after all the BS that's been going on. After you know, who says he's going to be horrible? Who says he's going to be good? You know. I say give the guy a chance. We'll see what we'll see what turns out. But <laughs> is he going to actually be Batman or that douche from Mallrats? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Well, he's a gray-haired Batman, which you know is is more along the Dark Knight and series. There so. is a Robin, and supposedly. there is a Robin. They there say is a now. Robin, um, but it's a girl, isn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. there's a Robin, yep. yeah. an Aquaman, a Cyborg, Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman. And, and our Flash and yeah, Arrow you, in it? Get, no, no, no. There, well, there's a Flash, no. but he's not played by the dude uh, in the show. Well, that's uh, Grant Gustin. 
Yeah, he's played by Ari or AV yeah. or something. That's dumb. It's Ari. Uh, it's... Basically, DC turned around and gave CW the middle finger and went, yes, well, we're not including you in the TV show, even though you're building your own universe. But oh, Arrow, Flash, and Supergirl in the new show are going to be in the same universe. Yeah, gotcha. But they won't have anything to do with the movies. The movies. Mm. That's so stupid. Marvel's just sitting there and be like, Shaking hey. their heads like, you idiots. I mean, DC, I think, is the best when it comes to superhero yep. TV shows. Right. And yep. Marvel's hey, got the movies. Marvel's got the movies. Like, DC uh, should dump all their money well, into DC, the DC also has the animated movies, which are really good. Oh, they yeah. do. They're yeah. very good. And Marvel doesn't. But Marvel's right. got the action, live-action movies, which are phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. But DC... They, but they're new to it. They're both new to it. Uh, if you look at it, Flash Arrow is... What third season? Flash is new. Gotham's new. But DC's you know? had you know Superman shows in like the eighties and well in the forties. Yeah, but they, they were they had it in the in they the were 80s hokey and, the 90s. and you know this is different. Like I mean for the time period now. Yeah, small you know what I mean? Yeah, but go back to Constantine. Constantine is also DC. Yeah, but it's given pretty much the graveyard showing. I, it's going to fail. It's a fantastic show, and I, I've been loving it. It's I know it's based around where I live, but still, it's uh, I'm loving it, and it's. I like Getting it too. Canceled due to it. I like it too. You know, I don't love it, but I, I like it. You know, and I'm, I'm. What is it? Thirteen episodes? It's gonna be thirteen. Uh, uh, I believe no. it's gonna be thirteen. It's gonna be, you know, a standard, uh, a standard length. I think they're gonna have the Firefly. Uh, it's gonna have the Firefly syndrome afterwards, where yep. people are gonna try to bring it back. Mm. And uh, same thing with Firefly, and it's just gonna have Ooh. that cult following. Yeah. Speaking, speaking of Firefly, they are making a Firefly PC game, and I've signed up for the beta. Oh, cool. Oh, good. Now, you, then you can review it. Yeah. That's how I go, sir. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah, it's, shame. it's getting to be that time uh, of the evening yep. where we're going to do our uh, Geekly Desires. So listen to this. As the show winds down, now it's time for our Geekly Desires. <laughs> All right. So uh, Every time. <laughs> you're, just, you're just a giggly son of a gun. So, uh, start off, James, since you're so happy. Ooh, yeah. My geekly desire this week is a 2,400 euro Spider-Man suit made by spider Annie, and it is the Amazing Spider-Man 2 suit, and it is almost movie perfect. Like, so close. It's fantastic, and I really want it. <laughs> How much is it? Uh, 2,400 euros, which is... Of euros? I think it's a years old. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? Wow. Yeah, Spadman was with the, uh, you know, the Romans. Uh, it's 1,900 pounds, which is approximately, I want to say, around $2,400, maybe? Wait, huh? wait, wait. Back up. You just said it was 2,000 some odd euros. Oh, you said yeah. pounds. I'm sorry. Okay, and then yeah, nineteen hundred okay. pounds, which Confused is me with so all like these uh, twenty two hundred. How, m- how many pounds. pesos is it, James? How many pesos? <laughs> <laughs> I would not want to count that <laughs> ever. <laughs> all right, so that's cool. That's cool. Uh, Borg, Borg Nine. What do you got? Can I talk about what I got that I've wanted for a long time? Whatever your geekly desire is, my friend. I had it. Well, I got to figure out a new one, but I wanted to meet George R. R. Martin and get an autograph. And I got to do that uh, a couple we- uh, weeks ago. Right. And uh, that was like a, a highlight of my th- my my geek desire, and it was fulfilled. Now I'm, I have a void that I can't fulfill. Fill yet? <laughs> I don't know. Some celebrity has to go into that slot. Yeah. Stanley. I met him twice. Hmm. But yeah. Steve some- Amell. I got his Steve Amell too. Uh, I don't know. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I, I I meet a lot of them. Um. I don't know. I, I, oh, Robert Kirkman's up there now. I always miss him, and I would like to meet Robert Kirkman and get an autograph from him in person. Be so badass. That'd be Robert Kirkman. Badass, sir. So what is my geekly desire? I think it's pathetic enough, probably for this Dark Below content that's coming out on Tuesday. I've been waiting for it for a long time. I know Mike, too, hates Destiny, but... I still am heavily addicted to it. No matter what game I purchase, I'm still going back to Destiny. So it must be something special. That like sounds that sounds fun. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds wonderful. Uh, I think my geek desire, uh, since we're going to the Walker Stalker Con, um, I really just want to meet Rick. Yeah, Andrew Lincoln. Is he yeah, going? Andrew Lincoln. I don't. They haven't confirmed it, but. Also, Norman Reedus would be cool to meet, you oh, know, yeah. talk to him. I thought none of the live so, guys are going. Oh, it's going to be all No, they're going to be there. You just can't interview. 
Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Reedus is a cool guy. Yeah, so I, those, one of those two guys is probably one of my one of my top picks to meet and, and kind of chat with. Um, so I'm going with the non uh the non product Geekly Desire. Maybe I'll be that solo guy that walks straight to Carol. <laughs> Nobody's near Carol. I'll just go get my interview with Carol. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, that concludes our Geekly Desire. Hmm. And this has been another installment of our TV Desires. Hey, thanks for asking me. <laughs> oh. oh. We Stink. forgot about you over there in the corner. What's your geekly desire there, Stink? Well, I don't really have a geekly desire, but I do want to give a, a shout-out to somebody on Twitch, and that is Missy X. Um, Who is a guy? Just, just ch- It's uh, Missy. It's M-I-S-Z-Y-X. Check her out on Twitch. That's all. All right, cool. There's your geekly desire, Missy, Missy X. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so, guys, that that concludes the show for this evening. Make sure you tune in next week, uh, same time, same channel, CorrosiveRadio.com. Um, make sure you check uh, Burnt Film, 2 p.m. on Sundays. And um, check out our Facebook page, like us on Twitter, all that mumbo-jumbo. Just follow us, call in. Nobody won the prize tonight. That's yeah, all. But you know, right. sometimes that's womp, womp. Womp, yeah. womp. Guys, we did we did have viewers on Twitch though tonight, and there were some people I couldn't tell if they were asking me questions or if they were they were commenting directly during uh, Toombs' uh, uh, travel guide thing. But we're huh. getting there. All right, cool. Oh, hey, hey thanks for listening, and uh, we're gonna leave you off with a bit of uh, Max Payne song here. Um, because it's beautiful. Because that's what we do. Copyright like a flower in the there. summer. What a bummer. <laughs> I wish I could talk to her. I am so a leaf on the wind. All right. All right, she well. said hi. Geek Blast out. Bye. Peace.